Hey everyone, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, and in today's special interview, you're going to hear just how important essential amino acids are to your recovery after limb lengthening surgery. Now, our special guest today is the Center Director for Translational Research in Aging and Longevity at the Reynolds Institute. He's a professor of geriatrics at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, and he's a shareholder in the Amino Company. Please enjoy the interview with Dr. Robert Wolf. Hey, Dr. Wolf, how are you doing today? Good, good. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks so much for, uh, for joining me. I think this is going to be really enlightening for a lot of my audience, considering the research that you've done. I mean, you have an astounding over 450 peer-reviewed articles, three books, multiple papers, all of which have been cited over 50,000 times. Uh, it's no wonder your research is continuously funded by the NIH, among other numerous awards you've received in clinical nutrition, metabolic processes, and humans, especially that of amino acids, which is pretty much the impact um, it's going to have on recovery, which we're going to talk about today. So, um, Dr. Wolf, your research truly amazing, uh, and it aligns really well with my philosophy that I preach on my channel, which is patients recovering from the limb lengthening procedure. And this surgery is pretty traumatic to a lot of patients. Um, pretty much, they're essentially breaking the legs and planting a lengthening device to create uh, distraction osteogenesis and create new bone. So. I want to kind of like bring you on to kind of talk about how amino acids can impact recovery. So a natural athlete myself and um, you and your research. So can you explain how the intake of essential amino acids are really important for recovery, such as after surgery? Sure. Well, I think we should sort of very briefly start at the beginning and, and what are amino acids and the, the components of the protein in the body. And uh, over 100 years ago, the Nobel Prize was given for determining that you aren't just born with a certain amount of protein and then that's, that's it, that there's a constant state of turnover, a breakdown of protein and, uh, and synthesis of new protein. And we can focus on muscle, but it's true for bone, it's true for skin, it's true for every tissue, that uh, there needs to be a balance between synthesis and breakdown. Of, there's a protein turnover and if you have a, a circumstance in which the breakdown exceeds the rate of synthesis, then you lose protein. And so this is the situation what happens with severe surg with surgery of a serious nature. You have a catabolic response that you start losing protein because uh, I think the best way to think about it is that if you think about an animal that in the wild that gets injured and uh, has no real capacity to get food, Mm -hmm. how's it going to survive? Because there are certain processes in the body that have to continue even without food. And in particular, the wound healing, uh, in the case of the uh, extension surgery, the bone, mm -hmm. uh, it, as well as the heart and lungs have to continue to function. And where are they going to get the amino acids to provide this continual uh, supply to enable new protein to be synthesized? And, uh, and it can't, nine of the amino acids that are required can't be made in the body. So it has to come from nutrition. Well, there is no nutrition. So what happens is the muscle starts breaking down and providing amino acids into the blood. So that in the case of muscle, the rate of breakdown greatly exceeds the rate of synthesis. And those amino acids that are released into the blood then become the substrates for uh, the new protein that enables wound healing, that enables uh, resistance to infection, and everything else, so that uh, so that so that we have this circumstance where you're actually eating up your own muscle protein to provide the fuel for the re restorative processes that are immediately necessary for recovery. Mm -hmm. Of course, the problem is that uh, this can only last for a short period of time. Eventually, you're going to run out of the muscle protein or be seriously debilitated, and this is where the nutrition involving the amino acids comes in. You have to replace those amino acids. And what we found mm -hmm. is that uh, if this is done aggressively from the get-go, you will have a much greater response, not only in terms of maintaining your muscle mass, but also in terms of providing the precursors for the production of the new bone, for the uh, maintenance of immune function, all the other aspects of the response to surgery that go along. So that uh, so to just summarize, the point is that there's a constant turnover of protein in the body and that we have to provide a certain number of amino acids that can't be produced in the body to enable that rate of protein synthesis to maintain or exceed the rate of breakdown. You talked about regulation of the, the, the rate of turnover versus rebuild, but how can ample amino acids help 
a patient who underwent the limb lengthening surgery pretty much retain their muscle as much as possible. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, one of the most uh, uh, sort of fundamental studies that we did to, to uh, uh, address this issue is the muscle loss that occurs in space flight because of lack of activity. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that circumstance, uh, that we found that if we provided uh, uh, the key amino acids that are needed mm -hmm. to stimulate the growth of new muscle, they were able to completely eliminate the loss of muscle that occurred with complete inactivity. Uh, the situation after surgery is a little more complicated because you not only have uh, uh, inactivity, but you have layered on it this stress response that's stimulating the breakdown of protein. And so that it becomes, and, and furthermore, quite often after serious surgery, you're not really feeling like eating as much as you'd like, particularly, uh, you know, heavy protein meals. Mm -hmm. So that you have a whole, whole uh, consequence of, of uh, inactivity, of a stress response, and maybe not even feeling like eating as much as you should. Mm -hmm. and, and these are all the factors that contribute to the loss of muscle. So we can reverse that by providing a key amino acids to stimulate the process. And I think that the, the key aspect of my research has been not just replacing the amino acids that seem to be lost, but to formulate uh, mixtures of key amino acids that activate molecular processes within the muscle that regulate the rate of protein synthesis so that we not only provide the building blocks for new protein, but we actually control some of the molecular mechanisms that are involved in activating the process of protein synthesis and blunting the process of protein breakdown. Wow, that's amazing. And that actually really kind of triggers this uh, thought in my head. I did, um, years ago in my undergraduate studies, I did a research paper on the mTOR pathway, and I'm sure you're familiar with this pathway, um, the mechanistic target of rapamycin. And um, essentially, it's a nutrient-sensitive pathway where key amino acids like leucine being present can uh, stimulate growth and whatnot. Can you speak about um, how this pathway and the essential amino acids can be, um, you know, impacted by the presence of these uh, substrates? So the, the mTOR pathway is kind of the key in this whole process because uh, under normal circumstances, the, there's as you're sitting there, your mTOR activation is really not necessary for new protein to be produced. You're pretty much at a level that's uh, adequate of activation. But when you have a stress response like the surgery, yeah. the uh, sensitivity becomes much diminished and, and you need to activate this uh, mTOR pathway mm -hmm. either pharmacologically or through nutrient. Mm -hmm. So that this is part of the aspect of the development of a... Uh, uh, formulation that would be active or effective in this normally catabolic state where we give uh, a formulation that's heavy in leucine uh -huh. because leucine is really a key nutrient that not only is required for the production of new protein, but it actually can regulate the mTOR activity. Mm -hmm. And so by giving a, a free amino acid mixture that has a high content of leucine, we're able to activate the mTOR pathway. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I mentioned the, uh, the, the, the concept of free amino acids versus protein right. because the free amino acids are absorbed very quickly and reach a very high peak, uh, much more so than ever occurs with protein, which is absorbed. The amino acids in the protein mm -hmm. are absorbed over a much longer period of time, and you never get to a very high level of the amino acids, oddly enough. And so the uh, dietary protein has to be eaten in very large quantities to actually activate the mTOR, mm -hmm. whereas only a matter of a few grams of, an, of, of essential amino acid mixture with a high proportion of leucine can come into the bloodstream so quickly that it will reach a higher concentration and activate the mTOR. So, so the concept that we're really, uh, that, that we developed so many years ago was to provide enough leucine to activate the mTOR but then recognizing that you've got to have, you, you can it's like turning the key onto a car, you're ready to go, but you got to have gas in the car to be able to make it run. Right. And that's, that's similar to the circumstance with uh, high leucine. Mm -hmm. You can activate the mTOR, but there have got to be, you've got to have all the amino acid components of the protein. 
So we're combining the high leucine with the other essential amino acids in the proportions that they're needed to produce uh, muscle protein. So that there's uh, two components here. We're activating the mTOR, but we're also providing the other essential amino acids that are required to actually be the building blocks of the newly produced protein. That is so cool. That's all up my alley. I love that stuff. Now, Dr. Wolf, you mentioned um, the ingestion of amino acids, free amino acids versus complete proteins. Now, is there a particular number amount of amino acids, say 15 grams, is it equivalent to say 40 grams of, let's say a chicken breast, a protein? Um, obviously a chicken breast is pretty high quality protein, but in terms of free amino acids, you're getting a much higher concentration. Can you talk a little bit about the comparisons of the, the two different uh, amino sure. acids? Sure. I, I think that the key and, and what I uh, really express continually in my book on this is that uh, that there's a, there's a combination of effects right. that the free amino acids activate the process and, and are able to uh, stimulate protein synthesis very rapidly and, and in a dose response way up to about 15 grams. Okay. Uh, on a dose of 15 grams, there's no really further activation. Okay. Um, so you want to uh, combine the, uh, the use of the free amino acid supplementation with uh, intact proteins. And in fact, we have one uh, composition spe specifically designed for healing from surgery yes. that has uh, more essential amino acids, but also contains some high quality protein mm -hmm. Because that way, where, where the free amino acids come in and spike the protein synthesis, they also diminish uh, uh, right. uh, fairly rapidly compared to dietary proteins. So by a combination of the two, we're able to extend the stimulatory effect. So the process is activated by the essential amino acids and, and really stimulated. But then uh, we have a, 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 a certain amount of protein which sustains that response over a more prolonged period of time. And uh, the two, two aspects work together. And, and this is the case with all your, uh, uh, any sort of amino acid supplement, that it's working in conjunction with your dietary protein. Right. So it's not a case of either or, okay, take the amino acid supplements, you don't need protein or vice versa. The two are meant to really work in conjunction and, and specifically with regard to recovery. Right. This is why we uh, have combined and, 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 I think with regard to bone, it's important to think about the uh, role of collagen production mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, you might, uh, you know, it's become really popular. The idea with collagen, of course, was similar to my experience for many, many years taking care of burned, severely burned children that had newly transplanted skin on their uh, covering their wounds, and that the uh, recovery of these children was highly dependent on synthesis of new collagen. Mm -hmm. And what we found was that the collagen itself is not a good source because most of the, the majority of the amino acids that are in collagen are produced in the body anyway, the proline and the glycine, and that you really don't need those, that the key for collagen protein synthesis is very similar to muscle, and that is leucine activates the mTOR, and you need those essential amino acids to sort of kickstart the process. But, but uh, in a stressful state, you may run short of, leucine, of, of the other uh, non-essential amino acids in collagen. And that's the reason for adding some intact protein as well. So that, so that this particular patent is focused on, on, on prolonging the effect of the free amino acids, but also provide it, making sure that there are adequate non-essential amino acids available to uh, to promote collagen synthesis, which is heavily uh, uh, composed of uh, non-essential amino acids. Right. Yeah, that, that makes complete sense. And I think that that's a really big um, aspect here because bone healing is the primary thing after a surgery like this. You want to heal the bone. But then if you think about it, now the muscle is being stretched and um, the, the micro tears in the muscle and then the, the healing of that is going to be uh, very important as well. So very cool. Now, Dr. Wolf, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about how eating an ample amount of calories, um, how is that important while keeping in mind the macronutrient ratios? Because we know that if you eat, you're, let's say you're a runner and you're eating a big bowl of pasta before you run the next day versus let's say a bodybuilder and their protein requirements to you know, uh, stimulate protein synthesis to build quality muscle. Can you compare the two of like, you know, how that works? Yeah. 
great. That's a great question because I think it really depends on your goal. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're, we, we have another, uh, another patent for a product for weight loss where it is based on the fact that this process of protein turnover and protein synthesis that we're providing a stimulus for with the amino acids costs energy right. in the form of ATP. So that in, in the case of weight loss, which is obviously uh, a very hot topic these days, <laughs> by providing uh, extra amino acids, we're using more energy and, and you lose weight. Right. Uh, the flip side of that is if you want to gain muscle, mm -hmm. anybody that's involved in, in uh, bodybuilding will, will understand the fact that you need energy to provide the ATP to uh, fuel the reactions necessary to produce new muscle protein and new bone protein. Mm -hmm. so, that, uh, so that eating an adequate amount of energy is, uh, uh, is a crucial part of, uh, of uh, uh, restoring your muscle and, and, and stimulating bone growth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think your point about the macronutrient uh, composition is also very important. Okay. Uh, fundamentally, it's either going to be carbohydrate or fat, <laughs> but the carbohydrates uh, uh, have variation there, and that is some are activating quite a high release of insulin and others are, are not. Right. And the dietary fats come in a whole variety of uh, forms, and, and I don't want to get too far into the details of this other than to say that uh, – that it's not just calories, but you can optimize your uh, carb and fat uh, intake as well to work with the uh, uh, work with the uh, uh, aminos to uh, to stimulate synthesis as rapidly as possible. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think that also kind of triggers that uh, mTOR pathway. Insulin is one of the uh, triggers. Very cool. Um, now I want to go a little bit more in depth and detail talk about the amino acids. So you mentioned obviously dietary proteins versus essential amino acids earlier. Now I want to talk about whey protein because now we know whey protein has been pretty much the big king of all proteins in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years since the supplements have been going crazy. But how is essential amino, how are essential amino acids versus whey protein versus BCAAs, branched chain amino acids? Can you compare the three, the pros and cons of each? Sure. The BCAAs, first of all, um, can activate the mTOR pathway. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only three essential amino acids that you're providing, and you need nine essential amino acids to produce uh, muscle protein. And, and the uh, BCAAs are really not effective in stimulating muscle protein. There'll be a transient increase where there's a little more effective reutilization of the essentials that are released from protein breakdown. But you've activated the process, but it's not really... Uh, going anywhere. You've started the engine of the car, but you don't have any uh, uh, gas to, to keep it going. So I, I, we can dismiss that aspect. The whey protein is another aspect. Mm -hmm. and I think it uh, is very important to uh, consider combining the whey protein with the uh, essential amino acids, particularly for regeneration of tissue. And in fact, as I said, the the product that we're, where we developed that uh, combines free amino acids, free essential amino acids, it's combined with a smaller amount of whey protein because of its effective uh, uh, its effectiveness in stimulating the growth of new protein and uh, uh, as well as providing the non-essential amino acids that are maybe necessary in, in this condition. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, when we compare them side by side, yeah. we show a significant gram for gram basis about a threefold greater effect of the free essential amino acids in the whey protein. Okay. And the reason, and this is not just in, in the red protein synthesis, but uh, in a 12 week study and in, in, uh, with, with over 90 subjects, we showed that the uh, improvement that with uh, the free amino acids as compared to whey protein was more than double uh, the, the uh, effect of whey protein. And I, I don't want this to be misinterpreted in saying that the essential amino acids should be used instead of whey protein. It's a place for both because the whey protein, the effect is more prolonged and it's also uh, um, provides some necessary uh, other amino acids that aren't in the essentials. But in a head-to-head -head comparison, the amino acids are much more effective. And, and the reason is because the exact formulation has been composed to activate the molecular processes in the, in the muscle and provide the other essentials in the exact ratios that they're required. And 
this optimization of the essential amino acid ratios can't be affected by an intact protein. It, the, the protein is, is what it is. And the reason leucine is, is uh, an effective uh, uh, dietary supplement is the fact that about 25% of the free essential of the, of the amino acids in whey protein is, is leucine. Yeah. But we found that in these uh, areas where we have to really activate the mTOR that it needs to be as high as 40% of leucine. So you can't get to that level. Right. So that, you know, this con the, the notion of how much protein do you need to equal the, 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 the really there's no amount of protein you're going to be able to eat. Yeah. Because your your uh, balance of the aminos is just not optimal. It's it's there are some proteins that are better than others, but they all fall short of the formulation where we've specifically engineered the composition of amino acids to exactly coincide with the requirement for stimulation of protein synthesis. That is truly amazing, and I didn't even know that. I, that's really cool because whey protein has been the hype lately. But um, I've been a big user of um, BCAs for years, but now I'm transitioning to the essential amino acids and the product, and we'll talk about that towards the end. Now, uh, Dr. Wolf, I want to go a little bit into you mentioned we were talking about whey protein versus essential amino acids, um, and a lot of people always ask how much protein can I absorb in one sitting, but I think the question should be more so how much can I digest versus absorb? And I think those are two different aspects. Can you talk about, based on your research, can you talk about those two different aspects of digestion of amino acids versus absorption? Sure. Um, the digestion of amino, of, of, of dietary protein yeah, is a component in the uh, quantitation of the uh, quality of the protein because uh, something like whey proteins digested pretty extensively, almost uh, 90 to 92% of what you eat ends up coming into the body mm -hmm. over a period of time, whereas uh, 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 some of the uh, vegetable proteins may be as low as 50%. So this is not a trivial issue that there's a, uh, a considerable difference in the uh, actual effectiveness of what you eat versus what's actually absorbed into the body. Right. Thing with the amino acids, the free amino acids are absorbed by a different process. They don't have to be specifically transported like the digested protein amino acids. They are immediately absorbed by the same mechanisms whereby you absorb glucose, so that it, you get a hundred percent absorption. So that uh, the formulation that you make uh, uh, that, that is that you compose the uh, mixture of essentials with is exactly the composition that will come into the bloodstream. Okay. Whereas when you look at a dietary protein, the, uh, uh, the, the absorption of the individual amino acids is not uniform. So it may range from 70% for one of the amino acids to 100% for a different amino acid. So, that, so the profile of the amino acids in the blood resulting from dietary protein intake uh, may not directly reflect the profile that you've actually eaten. Nice. Whereas we know with the uh, free amino acids, what you eat is what you get in the blood. So that's another aspect that, that makes it much more easy to control yeah. the effect on metabolic processes because we know what the blood levels are going to do in each and every case of amino, each individual amino acid. We know exactly how much it will increase. And that's why our dose responses are so uh, accurate. We know exactly how much will be effective and beyond a certain amount that it's not going to be effective anymore in that particular dosage. So that, uh, so that I think it's a significant advantage that we have this, that whatever we eat with the free amino acid is absorbed. Now I want to kind of like talk about a little bit of your, the formulation we have here um, and the amino company. Now your research, it was involving the NASA astronauts and we talked about how it propelled, propelled the amino company's key formulation. Um, now I have here uh, Heal, which um, I'm sure you're well familiar with, and this is the product that you were talking about and how it has the nice blend of not only the essential amino acids, but also a little bit of that whey protein added in there for the prolonged um, rate of digestion. So can you explain how this would be much more effective for somebody who's coming out of surgery than just going with it with normal food and just eating a high bolus of food multiple times a day? Sure. Um, the, the key is that the, the free amino acids, the essential amino acids are really the key here. Yeah. The whey protein is added because in, in the fact is that most people coming out of surgery aren't eating a full normal diet. So that, uh, that, that where we consider the non-essential amino acids to be amino acids that are 
produced in the body normally that may be, uh, they may be not quite enough in this circumstance, particularly where collagen synthesis is so important and we need to provide uh, the amino acids, glycine and proline that aren't produced that fast in the body. So, uh, but the key really to the process of the product is the essential amino acid blend. And the reason is that, that the amino acids rise to a peak level that are, that's much higher mm -hmm. than will occur with your dietary protein intake. And, the surgery is not just that the, the physical damage to the muscle that's done, but this elicits a stress response. So when you come out of the anesthetic, you, you, you feel like you've really been in a, you know, someone's been punching you or whatever. I mean, you know, you feel, you know, your body has been through something. It, the body is not meant to be invaded by surgeons. So that, uh, you know, when you have this kind of response, you get this stress response that really blunts the, uh, capacity of muscle and bone to produce new protein mm. and we're able to formulate a, a mixture of essential amino acids that overcomes this what, what's called anabolic resistance so anabolic state refers to building up tissue building up muscle protein building up bone right and uh, and uh, the free amino acid mixture combines the two aspects that are important the activation of the mTOR pathway as well as providing all of the uh, building blocks for new protein. And so we really jump starting it. The way protein is is important in this context, just to, uh, because there may, when you stimulate protein synthesis from the essentials, mm -hmm. non-essentials go into the protein as well. Right. You're, you're assuming that you're able to make non-essentials fast enough to keep up. Yeah. But in this case, the essentials are so potent mm -hmm. that you really need to provide a small amount of the non-essentials as well to avoid a deficiency there. So that's, and, and, and it also extends the duration, but, yeah. but, it, but it, it also is a key uh, example that we want to combine this with your dietary intake. Right. So that this isn't in lieu of, of eating a good protein uh, based uh, diet with plenty of energy, mm -hmm. but it adds to it. I see. It adds to it. And it's a supplement for that reason. It's supposed to improve it. Um, now I actually want to kind of get into that. I want to talk about like the intake of how and when a patient could optimize their post-operative, um, you know, uh, recovery, uh, whether it's regulating the inflammatory response, like you just mentioned to actually promoting the muscle protein synthesis. So we have here, it says, uh, one scoop is a serving. Now a surgeon, let's say, say that the surgery happens midday afternoon, uh, do you recommend the, you, you don't, they don't take anything the day of, or how do you recommend that a patient take the heel complex? I think that the best, pro the, the, the best approach is to start the day after surgery. Yeah. And, and uh, a do two doses a day is going to be optimal. Okay. Uh, if you don't feel like it, one dose is a lot better than none, <laughs> but the, the reason that for the two doses is there's a maximal effect of, at any given dose. So you don't want to, ex there's no point in taking two doses at the same time right. because that's going to, you know, some of those amino acids that are just going to be oxidized and not used for mm -hmm. protein synthesis. Gotcha. So the optimal approach is two, two servings a day. Okay. Uh, the reason that it's good to start the day after yeah. is simply that, that it's not that uncommon to feel, have an upset stomach and, uh, um, uh, you know, you would absorb the amino acids. Yeah. But uh, uh, one of the things that's really crucial with this whole process is you got to actually take the stuff for it to do any good. Right. And if you if you have an upset stomach after the surgery and you've taken the product. Yeah. You, you could. It's hard to distinguish is it the product or just that I'm sick from uh, uh, the anesthetic. So uh, it's really not so much physiological. It's just the fact that. <laughs> that adherence is a lot better if you just start from scratch on the day after that one day of surgery, you're losing a lot of protein there. It, you know, the amount that you can stop with one extra dose is going to, you know, be pretty minuscule compared to how much the surgery has cost you. So if you start the day after that's, that's good, but, but consistency is really a key every day, twice a day. Okay. And I think that that's going to be a really big, um, you know, shout out to a lot of patients because a lot of them say that they lose muscle, especially in their legs because, uh, their glutes and stuff like that. And this is going to be a really good product to, uh, recommend to them. Now, 
surgery is one aspect of this procedure, but um, the procedure is happening over time. It's a lengthening of the bone over time. And then you go through the consolidation phase to heal the bone. And during that time frame, there's a lot of physical therapy that goes into place, stretching the new muscle that's, t- you know, laying down and the muscle excursion and whatnot. So those micro tears in the muscle are going to be broken down. How do you recommend, let's say after the first month of surgery, do they still take two doses a day or as the muscle starting to get really stretched out, do you recommend them up it, down it? What do you say? What do you say? I think that uh, it's a little bit uh, more dependent on the timing. Okay. And that is that uh, uh, you, should, you should take a, a dose about 30 minutes before the PT session. Okay. Or if you advance to where you're actually doing more strenuous exercise. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this really, because the, the, the PT itself actually causes some muscle damage, which is then repaired. Yeah. And it causes some loss of protein. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we prevent that by taking it before. We, we showed that the uh, taking the amino acids prior to exercise is almost twice as effective as taking it after. So taking it before and throughout the uh, the PT is really the optimal course. And then later in the day, your second dose. And if you're not doing the PT every day, yeah. you want to stick with the two doses morning and uh, in between meals, morning and, and, and afternoon. Okay. But uh, it's definitely a crucial mm-hmm. to amplify the uh, PT effect by having amino acids on board. You're, you're stimulating processes mm-hmm. of protein synthesis, not just in muscle, but realize that the bone uh, healing yeah. It's dependent on the torque that uh, muscle contraction puts on the bone. Yeah. And so that you, you, by providing a stronger muscle, you're actually strengthening your bone as well. Yeah. And there is uh, protein involved in the, pro- in the healing of bone at, at directly so that all of these processes are, are activated by PT mm-hmm. and you amplify the effectiveness by having the aminos on board when that PT is done. Wow, that is an amazing statement there. Now, Dr. Wolf, before we go, I want to talk about the other product that I have here uh, that I was recommended, and that is Perform. And a lot of my audience are pretty much athletes. Um, I'd say 85 or 90% of them are athletes, and they want to get back. And I'm not saying professional athletes. They're just people who are like to stay sure. running and whatnot. Now, I've taken this. This bottle's almost empty for the past month to give it a shot, and I love it. It gives me great pumps in the gym. But not only that, but I noticed that my energy levels are consistent. And I don't get as sore after my workouts. Now, this is composed of the same essential amino acids in here, has a tad bit of caffeine for that energy boost, and also electrolytes, a good balance of electrolytes. Can you talk a little bit about this product and how it's going to be beneficial for the patient who is now bone healed, ready to kind of start to reacclimate into normal day life? The, the, sure. The, the, there are two real aspects of this product that differ significantly from the heel. I, we talked about mTOR. We talked about uh, uh, activation of this and, and, the, and the, the surgery blunts it and so forth. But exercise itself activates mTOR. Right. And um, one of the problems with the high leucine mixture is that that means the others are lower. Right. Uh, it only adds up to 100%. So if you got 40% leucine, that's 60% all the others. And, you know, you really don't need the high leucine uh, in conjunction with exercise once you've passed the, the initial recovery stage because the exercise itself activates mTOR. Okay. So, so the key here is that the, uh, the profile has a much lower leucine content. It's about 22%, which is in accord with the amount of leucine in muscle protein. Mm. And, and we don't need to worry about the uh, activation of mTOR and that enables us in a single dose to have higher uh, other amino acids. But the second aspect that's really crucial here is that, that the neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine, are made from essential amino acids. And the balance between dopamine and serotonin uh, is really how what affects our focus, our energy levels. Mm-hmm. And so we've heard a lot about the fact that eating turkey has high tryptophan and that makes you sleepy because it stimulates serotonin. So we want to block that effect. Right. We want to activate the... Uh, production of dopamine, which is uh, a product of tyrosine and uh, which comes from phenylalanine. So that we've, we've modulated those amino acids to optimize the dopamine to serotonin ratio. And that's where you, the short term effect of, you can't really feel your muscles being produced, but you feel that uh, energy coming from a proper, uh, optimal balance of dopamine and serotonin. Mm. So that's really what helps you do the workout, right. you do a better workout and, and you've got the amino 
uh, products, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the uh, building blocks of the protein in accord with what's really needed. You don't need BCAs or you don't need a leucine because the exercise itself is doing that uh, activation uh, so that, so that it's a different formulation, which is specifically for uh, training once you really pass the recovery stage. So that, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, it also would certainly be useful if you haven't trouble getting the energy to do a workout during recovery. Right. Uh, that's, that's always the challenge, you know. So uh, I, I think that, 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 that the response to this particular product has been remarkable and that it really does give you a jolt of energy that, that's sustained throughout your workout because of this uh, uh, dopamine uh, serotonin effect. And, and I, think that, uh, I think that you really could use this in the context of uh, recovery from the surgery as well. It's not it's not going to be as effective alone because it doesn't activate mTOR itself. It's not designed to do that. So right. that you definitely need the heal product mm -hmm. when you're actually recovering. Right. But as far as an exercise product, it's, it is different. And uh, yeah, I, I wasn't involved in, in development of the actual product that I got to say the taste is great too for me. I really enjoy that. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, people talk about free amino acids as being, they get turned off like, well, they taste horrible, but, they need to taste this perform. It really is uh, pretty uh, enjoyable. It definitely is. And I, I, I really love the points that you brought up there, of like actually getting the energy to do the workouts. And for a patient going through this procedure, that's the physical therapy. And a lot of times when you're going through it, you're exhausted through the, the long process. We're talking three, four months long, yeah. you get exhausted. So this, this perform guys, I mean, this is a really beneficial product. And I'll talk a little bit at the end about how I thought of what I thought about it. But that's a really good point that you brought about the, the energy. But I think that these two in conjunction perform and heal are significant for uh, this limb lengthening surgery. So that's why I was so grateful that you um, were willing to come on and share your perspective. So Dr. Wolf, for anybody who's interested in more of your research and your, your, all of the literature that you've published over the years, where can they reach out to you or find your research? Is there some sort of like social media or a website that you have? Well, or <coughs> um the practical side, I think that there's two aspects. One is uh, aminoco.com, okay. which has a lot of uh, probably hundreds of uh, kind of concise blogs on, on topics. Mm -hmm. I also wrote a book uh, that, uh, well, there's two aspects of the book. Let's see, the title, uh, it's a available on Amazon. I'm looking for the exact title. It's uh, a guide to... A guide to amino acid and protein metabolism. Okay. And that's a little, that, that's for the really, uh, a little more serious, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a consumer oriented book, but it's for the serious consumer. Right. Uh, and, and the Aminoco actually, I think, has a couple of uh, uh, much shorter sort of digested versions that they uh, make available to, uh, with the purchase of the product so that uh, so I think that the, and, and they can also uh, lead you to the uh, more extensive uh, discussion of, 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 of the uh, amino underlying metabolism that's covered in the full book. Okay. So I think that that would be where I'd recommend is to go to that aminoco.com uh, okay. website. Got it. I'll make sure to post all of that in the, in the show notes. Now, Dr. Wolf, I've heard you're an avid runner yourself. So is, are there any, so patients going through this procedure, they're so nervous and scared to lose their athleticism and ability. And that's why I thought this was a great opportunity to bring you on and say, hey, look, here's two amazing products that can help you prevent the loss of your muscle, which is what moves you later after surgery and to help you rebuild it um, once you're back up on your feet. But you being a, an athlete, an amazing um, uh, doctor and scientist in your own respect, can you give any encouraging words to patients who are either finished their procedure and they're trying to get back or they're considering the procedure and ready to go down? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, um, there's two aspects. I, I, and the best I can draw on is that I had my hip replaced. Okay. And so that's a pretty traumatic surgery. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, uh, everyone told me, well, you'll never run again after you have the hip surgery. Mm. And, uh, and so I did two things that, uh, that, that were important. One is really uh, worked out before the surgery. Yes. I uh, uh, developed my muscles as well as possible, including taking aminos. Okay. And, uh, and then stuck with the, uh, the workouts after mm -hmm. uh, 
focusing more on resistance exercise than I uh, did. Obviously, I couldn't run from at all, but uh, uh, <clears throat> not just PT. I know PT is not enough. Uh, going well beyond that in terms of resistance exercise, combining with aminos. And um, yeah, I just uh, finished. I have a, a, a route that I run five miles and then do 10 interval workouts up, uh, runs up the hill and uh, no problem at all. So that, uh, you know, this notion that, that, uh, that uh, they tell hip replacement people, you're never going to uh, do this or that again. It's, it's BS. You know, you just got to be committed. The, the, the key for me was that it takes a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just got to stick with it and believe in the fact that if you stick with it, stick with the exercises, stick with the resistance training. That's why I, I mentioned about the reform, getting to the workout and doing it is so crucial because, you know, you get to a point where, okay, I'm doing okay now, and people tend to settle for that, and, and there's no need to. If you, It may take uh, as much as two years. I remember saying, uh, Tiger Woods saying, uh, somebody asked him how long he was going to recover from his surgery. He said, oh, about two years, and everybody was, whoa. Yeah. And sure enough, two or three years later, he won the Masters again. Yeah. But uh, in that time period, there were, he wasn't anywhere to be seen. And I mean, it just takes a long time and you have to be persistent. And that's really the main key I think I could uh, give to people that, that you just can't give up. You got to keep uh, taking the nutrition. You got to keep doing the exercises and eventually it'll come around. That is amazing. It's so amazing that you said two years, because that's like exactly what I preach on. And the surgeons that I interview, they say about two years for that full recovery to, after such a procedure. So, well, Everyone, that is Dr. Robert Wolf. Uh, Dr. Wolf, thank you so much for your time. Good. I'm glad to have the chance and good to meet you. Yep, you too. Wow, what a great interview with Dr. Wolf. I really enjoyed that. Not only did he explain the difference of amino acids depending on the source that they come from, but he also related it directly to the patient who's recovering after limb lengthening surgery or those who are recovered trying to get back on their feet. Now, if you're interested in seeing some of Dr. Wolf's research, you can check out some of the links that I posted in the show notes. Now, before we go, I'm going to give my take on these two products that we were talking about. So first up, we have Heal. So this is the amino company's version of their essential amino acids, which is what Dr. Wolf was talking about during the discussion. So right here on the bottle, it says it. Improve recovery time and outcomes following injury or surgery. Accelerate muscle repair and growth and help maintain a healthy inflammatory response. So it does all of the things that we need after limb thinning surgery. Now, my personal take, guys, you know me. I'm a natural pro bodybuilder. I don't take any drugs. So to build muscle, I have to destroy my body in the gym, okay? I have to train really, really hard with a lot of weight multiple times a week and be very crucial about the nutrition that I intake. So a lot of times, let's say leg day, I'm really sore for multiple days. We're talking three or four days after a leg day. And recently I've been trying to do leg day twice a week, trying to build up my legs a little bit more before my next competition season. And I would be sore for, like I said, three or four days. Once I started supplementing with heel, I work out about mid morning, uh, I would take this right after my workout and then again at night. I noticed that my recovery time was shortened from about three or four days to about two and a half to just about that third day. I was good, good to go, okay? Now, that's a big, big thing for me because I was able to train a lot sooner and have a more complete recovery. Okay, so it did two things for me. I noticed that my recovery time was shortened, but I also noticed my muscles were a little bit more solid. So that pretty much know, uh, shows me that it was preventing the muscle breakdown while amplifying muscle protein growth. Okay, so this is a really good product for not only training, but also for limb lengthening surgery. So if you're thinking about physical therapy, you're gonna be stretching those muscles, tearing the micro, uh, micro tears in the muscle. This is gonna be a really good product to have in your arsenal, okay? Next up, we have Perform. Now, Perform is the amino company's version of their pre-workout, and essentially it says, improve and extend peak athletic performance, enhance physical strength and endurance, and increase mental energy for extended focus and concentration. And I can tell you that it done all three of those things for myself. Being in the gym, I've used multiple pre-workouts over the years, and there's some good ones and there's some bad ones, but I can tell you that this simple makeup of you know having essential amino acids and a little bit of caffeine, because I'm very uh, stimulant sensitive, I can tell you that this went a long way to take me through a lot of intense workouts. I've, it's pretty much gone. I have like maybe a serving left, but it has a nice balance of electrolytes. It has all essential amino acids in here, and it has uh, a little bit of caffeine to give you that mental boost as well. And as Dr. Wolf mentioned in the interview of how it regulates that serotonin and dopamine uh, neurotransmitters, so it can keep you alert 
for nice jitter-free energy throughout your training. Or for limb lengthening surgery, it's for physical therapy. Because guys, we all know that limb lengthening surgery is a long process where you go for months and months without any type of break and you have to do your physical therapy to be successful. And we're not talking about just until your consolidation. You gotta do this for up to a year or so after. So this product can help you have the energy to do that, okay? It's gonna give the mental focus to keep going and not give up just like Dr. Wolf ended in his uh, discussion there. So uh, guys, if you wanna check out these two products, I will have a link to both of them in the description below the, below the video. And uh, until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out.